So this is the Give Energy Charger on the wall. I've shown this on an earlier video already, but you have a screw going in the top that you see the guys are fixed with a nice big washer. And then there's a couple of fixings that go through in the back there as well, just to hold it back nice and secure to the wall. You've got your wiring terminals on this side. Um, again, they've just flagged them with tape because the heat shrink is at the unit and not in the van, but there you go. We've got our six mil steel wire armor coming across. It's about a six meter run. And we are gonna bring a data link cable across as well because we're in a detached garage and the wireless signal isn't the best. So we're wanting to make sure we maintain that connection back to the inverter. Inside, there is a Give Energy five kilowatt hybrid inverter. Um, I'll try and get some footage of that indoors but it's customers home they've got stuff out and about so i'm not comfortable filming inside but i'll try and get some pictures and stuff of the setup we've got and what we're doing but we need to use the rs485 link here so we've got the connector out there ready to go onto our cap cable and we can join those two dots so the inverter and the EVSE charge point can see each other basically to stop this emptying the battery when it's not wanted for example and to understand the consumption and bring it into the system the wider ecosystem that the customers got with their give energy setup see the guys have got the the cleats on the wall we're going for for these ones um, rather than the the lineans this time so the wrap around and really that's just so we can get data cables in and out the linear ones are brilliant but they are a bit more tricky to get out of the wall um, after the fact if you are making any changes and this might be moving so we don't want our big holes in the wall to sort out uh, an opportunity to, to mess about with other cables and such Garage board itself is, is an interesting one, but we're keeping well away from that. It's on a, an RCD coming down to this plastic Hager board, but it is only on um, a 2.5 mil cable, which was disappointing on a relative new build. We thought it might be a little bit larger, hence having to drag our own feed over if you was wondering why we're not using the garage supply. These have the um, RCD protection built in. They have penfold protection built in. They have the RDDC protection built in. However, if they're the mechanical variety that complies with what we need in terms of regs in BS7671, I'm not sure. So we're going for a type A RCD at front of this to feed down to our charge point. And that's just going to allow us to make sure we've got the protection we need here for the work we're doing um, in terms of complying with regs. But we're not going to dwell on that. We'll look at integrating this with the app. I'll try and get some footage of that to show you how it works. There's, I think there's four different mode options. If you're going for the wireless link where they can all join to the same Wi-Fi network and then you don't need the, the data cable or the RS485, um, I think that's mode D. But there's some other wiring modes as well. And we'll cover those off um, through the course of this video. Otherwise, let's move along. See Nathan, I think he's just down the side. He's getting the cat cable sorted. We've opened up a little trench. The garage cable is about two mil under the surface. So we've taken a, a deeper approach to that. and got a nice deep trench, um, not down to 600, but under the pavers down there at the side. I don't think it's necessary and there's too much else going on in terms of the, the gas and the electric that we didn't want to start um, digging too far. So we've gone down about 450 or so. I've shared content on that on the videos before when ideally you want to get 600 down, which is the same as you'd use for the services under people's gardens and whatnot. Generally, they're deeper than that. Um, but in this case, I'm not too worried about it. It's not something you have to do. It's just kind of guidance. And if we was in the middle of someone's lawn, you've seen before when we've done it and we've gone down the full 600. It feels a little bit different when you're under pavers and there's already loads of cables dropping down anyway. Um, you know, it is, it is what it is on that front. We'll move on with the video. We'll see how this all comes up and maybe have a look at the app in the end. I'm just going to get this tidied up now and get all the cables dressed in as needed. Check the manual to see how this gets wired each end and I'll jump back and show you in just a little bit. Okay. So we've got our data link cable across. We are going to connect it to a local Wi-Fi as well. Just popped our little plug in down here. So we will be able to get it onto the internet of things, but this is just to link it back to the inverter. Got this all cleated up now, just going to neaten it all up with some ties, make it a bit more presentable, get the covers on and stuff. And then we're ready to start juicing it up and um, seeing how all this comes together. Just down the side here, getting the cables in and across, repairing the brick that decided to pop itself apart, as we can see everyone else's has, where they've been opening up in there. Little whisker box just on the outside wall there. And again, that's got the, the data cable running through it and also our power cable 
with the connection just because the steel wire armour is going into the back of the consumer unit it's already really busy and we just wanted to take it through into an air. We've got our RCD protection anyway so that's quite okay so what we didn't want to do was just smash an outdoor consumer unit that would have been so easy to stick one of um, the old outdoor jobbies under there but as I've said before that isn't the right thing to do and it won't actually comply with the regs in my opinion for various reasons least of all the um sorry most of all the pen fault metal board outside no thank you we'll go inside and have a little look in the cupboard and i'll show you what we've got in there so with these they have the metal front cover that goes on with these little thumb wheels and screws so you can cover over all your terminals and then this little plastic front cover which is consistent with the look of the Give Energy products and then there's a couple of screws in the bottom just to secure that in place um, and stop any access to that lot without the use of a tool and that's all of our connections then covered over and we can look to get this powered on, connect to the internet, run through the customer's app and I'll show you a bit of that in this video. Just to mention that you get two of the um, RIFID or RF ID, whatever they're called. I don't, I don't really understand how this technology works, to be honest. You get it on your hotel room doors and lots of EV charge points these days as well. If you swipe that across the little receiver there, it will activate a charging cycle. Same through the app. It's just a bit of security that's easy for people to use. Stick it on your key ring or leave it with the charger, as most people tend to do, especially when you're in a locked garage. Um, and then you've got easy ways of turning it on and off without having to mess about with the app, just to mention what those are. You see we're now ready for the commission, waiting for the customer to come back, they've popped out. So we need their app to start that process and we'll have a look at that in a minute. Let's have a look in the app. You can see here, we're gonna put the EV charger into an existing system. And first up, you need to choose your configuration mode. As I said earlier on, we're going for mode D, which is basically the cloud sync between an existing hybrid inverter and this new charge point. You need to tell the um, equipment what the DNO fuse rating is. And in this case, we've got an 80 amp and that we're using a Wi-Fi connection, not an ethernet connection. It then wants you to scan the QR code on the side of the product. Now, the holster was a little bit close to the charge point to get in on a good enough angle. So I just had to pop the cables off so I could wiggle my camera phone in there to get access to the QR code. But as soon as that's done, it's a simple case of running through the remaining options. So you can see here, it's um, now recognized the product. It has found the local Wi-Fi network um, in the garage that we've popped in there and then you just need to pop, pop in the password as you usually would for any Wi-Fi network to any product and then the um, EVSE will require a reboot to accept that and resync back into if we're going to call this the commissioning state and just a point of note with that it is done in the customers facing app the other give energy equipment you would use your installer portal to do your commissioning and everything but this is inside the consumers app and we're just waiting here now for the reboot. So we've run off, turned it off and on inside. I'm gonna speed up the video a little bit and then you can see we're back onto the commission itself. Um, and we need to listen that the EV charge has beeped. That's just to acknowledge that it has restarted. And then it runs into this state of um, connecting to the charger first and foremost before configuring it. And it takes you through it at every step. So you have to join the local Wi-Fi network of the product. And I assume there's some communication between um, your smartphone and the charge point itself. That warning error fault pops up in nearly every case when I've commissioned one of these, but it results in a tick and doesn't seem to have any adverse effects. So it just carries on. As long as you're getting ticks down these, I think you're, you're in good shape. And you can see here now it's, it's registering the EV charger onto the customer's account and then waiting for it to come online. And for those of you who are installing your EV chargers um, and your, your inverters and such, you'll know that that can take a bit of a while, sometimes up to 20 minutes before the equipment's registered onto the Give Energy servers. So if you are hanging at this state, don't be stood around, just put your phone to a side in your pocket or whatever um, and um, crack on with something else. I think at this stage I was tidying up a little bit having a little hoover out and clean up around the charge point so it's not time wasted. It's one of the frustrating aspects as an installer with all of this, and it's the same for the inverters, the all-in-ones, and other brands as well are, are equally bad where we're stood around for a couple of hours trying to get this stuff online and commissioned into customers' apps um, and such. But it's one of those things you need to allocate time for it in the um, overall program of work. And as long as you do that, you're getting paid for it. So it's um, just a bit of pill to swallow. It feels like a waste of time. So you see now we've got their message to say that we're, we're online and the equipment is in the customer's account. 
So this is where you can go into the um, stage of starting to play around with a charger. And there's different modes you can pop it in. You can see we're in the whole solar state there. And that basically means the car will only charge from um, solar energy and won't consume anything from the grid. You can put it into the hybrid state, which will do a mix of solar and grid and then full on grid there at the end. And the same, you can dictate um, the maximum charge current, maximum charge energy that you're going to pop into the charger. You can set it for plug and go, which basically just plug it in and it'll start charging. Um, and there is other options within there we'll look at in a minute. Now on the main dis dashboard, you can see the EV charger doesn't display. If you press the little settings cog just in that top right hand corner, you can then um, enable the EV charge point in the dashboard screen. Some people don't like to see it, some people do. So the option is there at your control and we will pop that on later on in the video and you can see there is an advanced tab at the top there which is currently in a beta state that just allows access to a few additional settings where you can disable the possibility of the charger from emptying the house battery we see if you want to add another charger remove the ev charger rename it change its ev wi-fi connection point you can do all of those things as well from in the ev charger settings so you can change the EV configuration if you put it in the wrong mode and made a mistake during the commission, if that's what we're calling it. All of those functions are inside the EV charger settings tab. And you can get your serial number and firmwares to check all of those things. If you want to do a factory reset, update the Wi-Fi details, that is all in there. And to be fair, the instructions throughout the app are pretty decent. It's um, Credit to Give Energy, their app is generally better than most others in terms of solar and EV. It's one of the strong points. And again, you can see here you can um, put that tab on to prevent the battery from discharging to EV. And that's in the advanced options. And again, you can change those things um, based on solar, hybrid from the drop down there. Get historical data and graphs and see exactly what you've done in terms of energy you've put into the EV over a period of time. Um, and you can see they're back at the main screen, still not put that tab on. Let's move on and see how this all comes out in the wash. So we've got the charger online now. You can see it's currently charging from solar. Uh, if I press stop charging, you can see it integrates with the charge point and turns it off. You can set it to a hybrid mode or a grid mode and it'll do um, whichever. If we look in the home dashboard, you can see we can see the EV charge point on there and you can activate it with the Rifid tags. So with these, you can see we've not got any solar export, so it isn't going to charge. But if we change it over, you see we've got a bit of solar export now. It's kicked in the charge point um, to cover off what it's asking for. Obviously, we don't have a vehicle here to demonstrate it. Well, I do. My electric van's around the corner. We could go and plug it in and try that. But just to show you really quickly with the EV Test 100, you can simulate all of that. And again, if you want to stop the charging with the Rifid tags, you can just do that. It will take a scan um, and deactivate a charge cycle as well. So you can unplug it uh, from the vehicle, which is all good. And back to the home screen. Again, you can see the vehicle in there and what the wider system's doing. It's not very sunny outside, so we're not really getting any export. The battery's sustaining in the house loads. And if we go into the EV charger settings, actually, if we go into these again, going to advanced you can see you can prevent battery from discharging to EV so if you switch that on then the household battery won't empty itself into the electric vehicle but again that's something that the customer has to select based on if they want to do that or not on your solar and hybrid modes you can select different options as well hope that's useful so there we are, we are in and now on or wired up inside. I didn't want to go into the install so much in itself because we've done that to death in prior videos already. There is a full Give Energy charge point installation in an earlier video. Um, so if you want to watch that, please do. This was more focusing on the app and some of the technicalities of industry, if you like. And just to touch back on the outdoor consumer unit again, and I've mentioned this in other content already, I have concerns with that to do with the pollution degree rating of the products we're putting inside of them. But with the metal boards, I have another worry, and that's to do with when pen faults occur. They are super duper rare, it's really unlikely, but when an EV charging app is notif notifying you of a loss of supply and that the charge is not working, it's kind of directing you by default to go off and interact with the um, switch gear and consumer unit. And when that could be the case that a pen fault is causing it to stop operating, I think there's a breakdown somewhere in that chain. Whether the app needs to notify in a different way when it's detecting a pen fault 
or we need to stop using metal boards outside or boards outside as a whole is for industry to decide. As installers ourselves, we won't fit external consumer units, but that's just the way we approach it. Um, again, if you was to come into contact with that consumer unit in an outdoor location, you're outside the eco potential zone on the mass of earth. And if that's got a diverted neutral current in the casing of the product, you're gonna feel that through your body. When these flaps are made of metal and you're lifting them up to access the switch gear, soon as you do that, you provide that path for the current if it wants to, if you're a earthy enough path to jump through you, which is why the pen fault protection exists in the first place. When you think about it, all the cars um, were mandated through the regs that we had to have earth rods or pen fault protection and now we're putting equipment pre that that's in an outdoor location and directing people to go and interact with it you know when that could be the case if the apps weren't notifying people that the cars had stopped charging it would be an unlikely circumstance it's still an unlikely circumstance but the way they work and i know with mine um, when it stops charging you go turn the rcbo on and off and see if that rectifies the problem everybody does that so it's, it's what's going to happen isn't it and when the board's outside the potential zone the risk increases so just to chuck that out there otherwise if you've got any questions around the install these are superchargers the way they integrate with the give energy ecosystem it's a no-brainer so if you've got give energy equipment and you're wanting a car charger i'm going to get one of these in on my home at the minute i'm using a wall box tied in with my give energy and occasionally when you start to get solar export and it starts to fill the car up with that solar power the battery will um, take that and start filling up the car when the sun's gone so you can end up in the position where you've you know you've been doing that running on sunshine malarkey, but then the sun drops away, but the battery fills the gap and your car empties the battery. It doesn't understand quite what's going off. Even with the export limit control, it still happens. I've had it a few times now. So with this and the cloud sync or through the RS485, you can stop all of that. It works really intelligently, um, really good value. These are among the best value products I'd say at the minute under 400 pound in terms of supply. It's incredible, so yeah. Not without faults, as always, we've got the RCD issue and if this has got a, an RCD inside it that meets the intent of the regs, but as long as you cover that if off in your installation, um, you know, you're all good. If you are a consumer looking for an EV charge point, and I say this um, as somebody who doesn't do many of these anymore because the likes of Octopus and Eon, Eon are chucking these in for peanuts um, with your outdoor boards, it's an uncompetitive thing for us to even quote against. But if you do want something that is going to be done to stand the test of time, not put you in any danger and meet the intent of BS7671, please do get in touch. Any questions about the system or install, drop them in below and as always I'll do my best to answer. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.